we ought to give the Lord the greatest hand clap of praise. Christmas and uh, 
things like that. I try to uh, preach messages around those. And uh, usually, uh, one, of, one of the messages, I like to look at something maybe a little deeper or a little from a different perspective uh, than I generally uh, have. And as I was um, studying, uh, Lord put this thought uh, in our heart, and I hope it will be helpful to you. Revelation chapter 11 and verse number 3. Revelation chapter 11 and verse number 3. Let's read the Word of God uh, together. Revelation 11 verse number 3. The Bible says, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, they shall prophesy two thousand, or excuse me, a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. One thousand two hundred and sixty days, so three and a half uh, years, uh, clothed in sackcloth. Uh, these are the uh, two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and, their, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they had, uh, excuse me, they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which Spiritually, it's called Sodom and Egypt, uh, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. Uh, and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, God, for the next little while that you'd help us, that, God, you'd uh, open our hearts, open our minds uh, to the word of God, help us to receive uh, that that you have for us, that that you purpose for us here tonight. I thank you, God, for all you have done, and Lord, what you will do at this place and in this hour. Lord, we thank you, we bless you, Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, tonight, as we look into the, this uh, chapter of the Word of God, I, I don't have time to go through all the uh, details of uh, what we believe uh, will be happening prophetically and all that, but I will, I will say, say this, that uh, this seems to be in the uh, first part uh, of uh, the, um, what we call the tribulation period uh, within the th first three and a half years. Uh, these witnesses show up, they, they preach, and uh, when people go to hurt them, as we've read, uh, bad things happen to them. And so I got to thinking about this verse here, verse number uh, 10, the Bible said, And they that dwell on the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because the, these two prophets that tormented them, uh, that dwell on the earth, because they had been killed. Now, I got to thinking about how that God is a God of creation. 
Uh, God is a God that creates uh, and has created everything, where is, wherein uh, Satan uh, is the master of, of being a counterfeit. Everything that God creates, Satan tries to counterfeit. And during the book of tribulation, it's no different. I talked about this here a while back when we done a, a study through this. But you have the Holy Trinity. And the Holy Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's what we call the Trinity. All three, God, all three, and all, all of them are God. Well, Satan has his unholy trinity as well. You have Satan, you have the Antichrist, and then you have the false prophet. Uh, we don't, I don't have time to read it, but if you want to mark down Revelation 13, uh, that's where you'll see the beast coming out of the sea. Uh, you can see that there. Um, the, then uh, in, the, uh, in the book of Revelation, you'll find out during the tribulation period, there's a whole lot of things that happen. There's a whole lot of things that go on, and Satan is always about trying uh, to duplicate what God created. God created it. Satan tries to duplicate it. Uh, the, the beast is the false prophet. He's the right hand of the Antichrist. Satan uh, continues uh, this masquerade uh, and, and, and makes this unholy trinity uh, to be a counterfeit uh, of, who, of who God is. Uh, the Bible said this, uh, th thinking about how that Satan is a counterfeit, how he's a master of trying to be a counterfeit. God had only one son, uh, the only begotten son. Uh, John 1, 18 said this, No man hath seen God at any time, uh, the only begotten uh, son, uh, which is, is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Uh, the Bible uh, talks about the son of of perdition, where God had a son, uh, Satan uh, it has what we call the son of perdition, 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse number 3, let no man deceive, deceive you, whereby any means that day shall not come, except there come fall away first, uh, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, even though he's not a literal offspring, he is the, the uh, man of sin, he is known as the son of perdition. I talked about the Trinity, how that God has the Trinity, Satan has the unholy Trinity. Revelation 20 and verse 10 said, the devil, uh, the devil that deceived them uh, was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So you got the devil, uh, the beast, and the false prophet, the unholy Trinity there, uh, where God has children. The Bible said, John 1 and verse number 12, uh, but as many as received him, uh, uh, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them uh, that believe on his name. God has children. Satan has children as well. Matthew 13 and verse 38, the field is the, world, is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the killed children of the wicked one. God has, a, has apostles. Uh, Satan has apostles as well. Uh, Matthew chapter 10, uh, he sends them out two by two, and, and he called, uh, or, or he, Luke chapter 10 rather, sends them out two by two. Matthew chapter 10, uh, you see here that uh, he has the 12 disciples, gives them power over unclean spirits, power to cast them out, power to, power to heal them. The names of the 12 apostles, Simon, uh, Peter, Andrew, James, and it goes on through there and names all their names. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 13 said, uh, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Now, this is what I thought was interesting, Brother Ronnie. Where God marks us, we are marked as his own. Um, the Bible said in Revelation 7, and verse number three, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, until uh, uh, we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. The Bible said in Revelation 13 uh, uh, that Satan does the same thing. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or on their foreheads. And so as we think about that, I want to preach uh, just a little while on the idea of a counterfeit Christmas. 
a counterfeit Christmas. Do you uh, remember there when we were reading uh, here in our, our text in Revelation chapter 11, how that they began to be merry and to rejoice about these uh, and begin to send gifts to each other over the fact that these people were dead. And so we think about Christmas and what goes on nowadays, how that we celebrate Christmas uh, because Jesus came, because he was born. Uh, we celebrate, we send gifts uh, because that these died. Uh, they celebrate, they send gifts. It's just a counterfeit Christmas. That's all Satan is and that's all Satan does. Uh, but their deaths uh, here reveal a, the cruelty of the time of tribulation. Look with me there in verse number seven. The Bible said, The beast that ascended up, or excuse me, out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And so we see it's a time of a cruel celebration. Uh, they celebrate because uh, that these two righteous men, uh, uh, these two servants of God, these two witnesses for Christ uh, have been killed. Uh, they, they look at them uh, and some people wonder who they are, uh, who they could be. There's a lot of people, a lot of speculation, a lot of debate on that. I personally believe uh, that it was Enoch and Elijah uh, because the Bible said this uh, is appointed unto man wants to die and after this the judgment. Uh, the Bible said, uh, talking about Enoch, uh, uh, the Bible said he was not for God took him. Uh, and one day, Mays Jackson said like this, he said it uh, in, in the book of Genesis there, he said he would walk with God in the cool of the day. And there, there come a time, uh, this, brother, this is Maysology right here, uh, he said I could hear it that he got to walking with God so far. God said, it's closer to my house than it is yours. Just come on with me. I don't know if that happened or not, but I do know that Enoch went to go be with God. He was not for God took him. And the Bible said that Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind. And, and so he didn't die a physical death. I, most, some people believe it was Moses. I myself do not believe it's Moses, but if you want to, uh, that's fine. But I personally, if I had to say who are these two, I would say it's got to be uh, Enoch and Elijah. Uh, simply according to that verse, it is appointed unto man who wants to die, and after this is the judgment. But regardless of who it is, uh, we see the cruelty that's shown in this time period of the tribulation. Can I just say this tonight? I know it's getting ready to be Christmas, and I know uh, that we, we're celebrating the birth, uh, and we're celebrating the advent. We're celebrating that Jesus came uh, uh, to this earth, uh, but can I tell you uh, uh, that there's a holy God in heaven, uh, and you've got to be right with Him. Uh, you have to have a relationship with Him. Uh, if you're not born again by the grace of God, uh, washed in the blood of God, uh, there'll be no hope for you. Uh, you'll go through this time of tribulation. Uh, uh, you'll go weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth, uh, and you'll go to a place called hell. Uh, but I'm glad, hallelujah, uh, there's hope tonight. Uh, if you're here tonight, hear the word of God. There's hope for you, child of God. Their death will reveal the cruelty of tribulation. Hell itself will be cruel. Look with me in verse number seven. I don't have the te uh, text there, but verse seven in your Bible said, and when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. What the Bible say? The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I'm glad the verse didn't stop there. He said, but I come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. A hell is a cruel, cruel place. Uh, those that are hooked up, uh, those that are children, a uh, twofold child of, uh, of hell, uh, they are a cruel, cruel people. Look at verse number nine. Uh, verse number nine there said this, and they, they of the people and kindreds and tongues uh, and nations shall see their dead bodies uh, three days and a half uh, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Now can you imagine what kind of people are going to make up this earth? What kind of people will make up society in that these people will lay dead in the street for three days and they don't even want to cover them up. They want to be able to look at them. They want to see them rot. They want to see them decay. I'm telling you, when 
when the when God takes the church out, when God takes the, when the Holy Spirit's uh, taken out of this earth, uh, it's going to be a cruel, cruel place. Uh, it's going to be an awful place. Uh, I, and I think about how I did everything nowadays. Uh, I think about uh, right around Christmas now. I'm talking about a counterfeit Christmas. Uh, I, nowadays, everybody decorates. Uh, you ride down the uh, little towns. Uh, they got lights up and everything else. Uh, and things look nice. Uh, and I wonder. I just wonder. I don't know. Uh, I, and I'm not going to stick around uh, uh, to find out about this. Brother Robert can hang out. And he can tell you all about how this is going to happen. But I'm not going to stick around and find out about it. Uh, but I wonder when the rapture happens. Uh, what Jesus call, calls his bride home. Uh, what he calls uh, his church home. Uh, I wonder what it will be like on that first Christmas. There going to be anything to rejoice about? There going to be anything to be happy about? There going to be anything to get excited about? The Bible said they'll hate these two prophets. That's not very far from where we live today. You let a man of God open up the word of God and preach what thus saith the Lord. This world's not going to love that. By the way, you don't have to be a preacher. If you'll just stand on the word of God, if you're a teacher, if you're a worker, if you're anything, and you just stand for God's word, you're going to be hated by this word. Yes. <laughs> but there's coming a day that whenever the righteous finally are taken out, that they're going to be so happy about it, they're going to, have, they're going to throw apart. They're going to watch and hope for the rotting. Oh, I know it, it, that, that, that's, that's gross here tonight, but I want you to get the picture. They, don't, they just leave them laying in the street. And I've mentioned this before, and we, you know we've read the story. I've often wondered how everyone would know. It's because right now, I got a we're live right now. Anybody, anywhere can watch what we're doing right now. And I guarantee you, I done seen enough craziness happen to know as soon as something happens, somebody gonna have a phone and it's going to be going on video. It's going to be going live on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram. All oh, they're going to be snapping about it. They're going to be doing all that stuff. And everybody's going to see it. They're going to rejoice at and that brings me to the set point. Let's look right here. <clears throat> Verse number 10. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. Now, there's some people that we live in this day and age. There's people that don't believe in Christmas. There's, there's Christians that don't believe in celebrating Christmas maybe like you do or maybe like I do. Some people, they'll, they'll see a tree in a house, tree in a church, and they think, well, they're just, that, that's an idol. And, you know, I'm not here to talk about all of that tonight. But here, what I am you know, here to tell you and talk about tonight is there's going to be the entire world. Right now, we have a portion I would even say a fraction of the world who truly celebrate what Christmas is really about. But the Bible said in verse number 10, they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them. And it goes on to say that every tongue, every tribe, anybody and everybody, they're all going to get happy and they're all going to sell right now. You go into a store, and uh, most of us around here, you go in, people say Merry Christmas, you say Merry Christmas. Sometimes it's Happy Holidays. Because what they're saying is Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, F Festivus for the rest of us. <laughs> we ain't got very many Seinfeld fans there. Uh, Happy New Year, all that stuff. They just want to incorporate it all. Just happy holidays. I'm not here to, to rant on that tonight. But what I'm saying is, not everybody is celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. 
But on this day, everybody will celebrate the death of these two prophets. Everybody is going to get excited about these prophets. Now, can't you just see how this is a counterfeit? Now, whenever Jesus came to this earth, uh, man, the angels showed up. Uh, the shepherds were out there watching over their flocks by night. Uh, the angels show up, uh, and they begin to say, Glory to God in the highest on earth, peace, uh, goodwill toward men. Uh, and uh, they, they're celebrating uh, the birth uh, of the, hallelujah, uh, the birth of the Savior, the birth uh, of the Messiah, the birth of the son of the King uh, that had been prophesied. Uh, but here they are. They seek death, and they get excited about it. They seek gore, and they get excited about it. They see blood spilled on the street, and then they're sending presents and they began to be merry about that. Can't you see how, how cruel that world is? How a time that they would celebrate death instead of celebrating life but I'm glad, hallelujah that it doesn't stop there the story doesn't quit there but Robert, but in three and a half days, in three and a half days, yeah. God shows them and God shows up and their death would reveal the conqueror of tribulation. Verse number 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. One of these days, let me just pause. One of these days, the trump of God will sound and he'll cry, Come up hither. Revelation chapter number 4. I believe the church has called out at the Revelation 4, verse number 1, when he says, Come up hither, a voice of a trump. I'm glad one of these days the voice is going to sound out so loud. It'll split the hey, it'll split up the new eastern skies, and then the saints that are dead will rise again, and then you are alive, and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. It'll be a short-lived celebration. Three and a half days. I've, I've mentioned to you this before. Jesus said, I, if you destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up again. And I believe the devil has been around and remembers his defeats enough to know, I better watch these. Three days rolls around, Brother Robert. Mm. They still dead. They still cold. Man, they stink. But three and a half days, yep. God said, get up, boys. Come home to me. God is not stuck in your little box. God don't do things just like you think he ought to always do things. Everybody doesn't have it figured out. Well, he did that like that before, and he'll do it like that again. And God said, no, just so you know I'm God, I'll just wait till my time, and I'll call them, and I'll lift them up. Now, look at what they said there. I, 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 can't, I can't stay there. Verse 13. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain uh, of men, 7,000, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. Now, if you know your Bible, you know that in Matthew chapter number 27, that Jesus is taken to a place called Golgotha, the place of the skull, Mount Calvary. And in that, he is hung between heaven and earth, bleeding naked and dying, stretched out for the sins of man. And whenever he cries with a loud voice, Father, it is finished, he gives up the ghost. And the Bible said there's a great earthquake. A great earthquake. And in the temple, the temple veil rent. The Bible even said that there were dead people that got up and started walking around. And that's not in my in the time for the message tonight. But all this stuff happens when Jesus dies. And the Bible said that the man that had 
I, his job was to go and, and to, to, to help him and be sure that this soldier or this criminal in his mind died. The soldier, he looked up and he said, truly, this was the Son of God. As, as all this stuff happened, and I begin to think about how that here in Revelation chapter number 11, I, the thing happens uh, and God brings them to me. God brings them back to life. There's a great earthquake. Can you just imagine people thinking, you know, I think I heard a story about this. You know, I think I remember my Paul Paul saying it. I think I remember that old preacher telling about how there was an earthquake and something's going on. Something just ain't right. And all of a sudden, they begin to get scared. All of a sudden, they realize what they've done. All of a sudden, they realize that the Bible said those that were there became frightened and gave glory to God. They just begin to praise the God of heaven. And you say, preacher, I don't understand that. I don't understand how that somebody that's lost could praise God. I tell you this. The Bible said, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. The Bible said, tells us that he has the birds to sing. He has all these things that are happening to bring praise and honor to him. And so just go ahead and mark it down. My God's got big enough to get praise out of the heathen. He's getting praise out of the lost because he is the conqueror of revelation. He is the one that's going to stand on the seashore and declare time will be no more. He'll set up his kingdom on this earth and he'll rule and reign. I'm telling you, God, there's a God in heaven that's in charge this evening. Counterfeit Christmas. Let me ask us this tonight. How many of Satan's counterfeits have we believed? Have we bought? <clears throat> Y'all ever been to the flea market? Yeah, I came up. <clears throat> Back in the day, you go to the flea market. And uh, I remember about the time I was in high school, it was real big back then, Dooney and Burke pocketbooks. I don't, nowadays it's probably Coach and I don't know what all the name brands are. Everybody wants this and that. Well, back then they wanted Dooney and Burke. Well, if you went to Belk, bought your Dooney and Burke, you're going to have to spend some money. Got to let go of some money. But you can go to the flea market, get you a Dooney and Burke, $20, $40, got you a brand name pocketbook. But it's a counterfeit. How many times has Satan? dangled something out in front of us. So I know you want it. And we believe and we buy his lie. Sometimes it goes like this. Well, you've been working hard. There ain't no reason you ought not be able to enjoy yourself and do this, whatever this is. And you just go ahead and say, you know what, I I reckon you're right. I'm going to do that even though you have no peace about it. You've not prayed about it. You have no direction from God about it. It feels. It feels like you, you should. I deserve this. You don't have to raise your hand, but how many of you are like me? And you've been there before. Come to find out that wasn't nothing but a counterfeit. You done went to the flea market. You got your happiness. Then I went to the flea market and got your joy. I can't remember the exact quote, but it goes something like this. Greatness never goes on the sale. The anointing always comes from sacrifice. If you want the best that 
God has for you, you won't try to catch it in the bargain bin at the Walmart. Y'all are going to bargain bins in the middle. It's candy or it's old DVDs. And they just piled up everywhere. Books. The bargain bins. Man. It's all right, I reckon. Charles, we're talking about the will of God. We're talking about what God wants for me. I won't be shuffled around trying to find something that will do in a rush in the bargain bin. I want the top shelf stuff. I want the best that God has for me. I want you to stand with me. How many of us this evening will come and gather around these altars and say, God, help us not to get caught up in a counterfeit. Come on. Lord, I want to thank you that God, you thought enough of me to give me the best. God, you want the best for me. And Lord, by your grace, Lord, I, I'm going to do what needs to be done to receive the best that you have for me. Come on. Maybe you're here tonight and you're struggling in some areas in your life, some, some things that are going on that you just don't even know really what's wrong. But well, something is, you're not where you used to be. You're not where you should be. God, would you help me? I don't want to be caught up in a counterfeit. I want the best you have for me. I want all that you have for me. Oh God, help us God to do things your way in your time. I love you. I bless you. God, I pray for every person tonight that's lost and undone. I ask you, God, that you convict him, draw them to a place of repentance before it's everlasting too late. God, do in hearts and lives what only you can do. Help us, God. I pray, God, for those that... Lord, if, this, if something don't happen, they'll be left behind. What an awful, awful, place. What an awful, awful time. God help us in these last days in Jesus' name. Speak to us. We love you and bless you. God, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. tonight and uh, we appreciate uh, your time hope that the Lord helped you spoke to you um, those of you that uh, are able and uh, want to help tonight uh, we'll uh, meet out in the foyer uh, get some, some of the stuff together there and so if, you, if you're not comfortable with that don't feel pressured at all uh, so uh, keep that in mind okay um, our musicians and all they're going to I think go ahead and start practicing so if y'all and we'll go ahead and do that uh, while we do that. Uh, that we can move on. All right. Well, uh, if you will, Art, I think there's some gold plates back there. Just hang out by a door somewhere. And uh, if you uh, can give tonight, if you can prepare to give, drop that in there. We'll get that taken care of. Uh, again, thank you for coming. Looking forward to Sunday. Uh, invite somebody. Bring somebody with you. We'll have a good time here on the Lord's Day. Uh, looking forward to a wonderful time together. All right, let's have a word of prayer and uh, we'll be dismissed. Uh, ask if you will. Uh, Gage, why don't you pray for us tonight? Lord God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time to give us here, Lord. And thank you for the message today, Lord. And let us get something out of it, Lord. And 
Just let us leave here differently than the way we came. Bless us and keep us safe as we leave. Go to pray. Amen. Amen.